Hello, this is Tea Time on PLOS TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories from around Africa and beyond. My name is Efeo Luau Shike, and of course, I'm never here alone. I've got my co-pilot, Ife Omai and Nimi Dekombi. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hello. guys. What's good? Hi. You guys are looking fly. That's why I said co-pilots. Okay. okay. Punchline, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, though? Yeah. Um, How's your day been? Yeah, just warming back into this new week. Mm. And you? Wait. Weekend that was amazing. Oh, oh yeah, what did you do? Fill yeah. us in. I, I went out. Where went. did you go? <laughs> nice life. Look at mm. that. Yeah, I went out um, on Saturday. Mm. Where did you go? I was on set. Like me and my friends were starting this like little project. Nice. Um, we want to shoot a movie. Nice. Oh, nice. Yes. So I was on set with them doing director work. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I basically did during the weekend, and I also went out with a couple of friends. So yeah. All right, that's so we're cool. looking forward to your movie. So maybe you fit into this first story we'll be talking about. As Yule Doche has replied, um, five, um, former governor of Lagos State, Fashola, and the current minister of Works and Housing, the actor said, sadly, at the moment, Nigeria is stuck with a crop of leaders who can move this country forward. Rather, they look forward to who to blame for their inefficiency. America has been producing action movies with plenty of gun violence since I was born to date. Have you ever seen any American leader blaming entertainers for crime in their country? That's because it's all entertainment. Hmm. So what's your take on this, guys? Do you want to go? No, I think we should go. Uh, I think it's absolute BS. Um, <laughs> Like <laughs> absolute BS on whose part? On, on Yulo Doche's part. Okay, on yeah. Yulo Doche's part um, I think it's just art nonsense. You know, sometimes it's nice to like say stuff and it sounds good, but mm -hmm. it's not actually based on fact. America has been so heavily criticized yeah. m many times about the gun violence mm. in their yeah, in their movies. Um, as of as, I think it was about two two thousand two thousand and twelve rather, mm -hmm. they had almost nine hundred and fifty something movies analyzed and they were mm. complaining about how those movies had in, in less than five minutes you were saying um you know violence, violence and then they yeah. have it as also as ho uh, <laughs> has also done research on what that I impact looks like in civilian um, world mm. and it's not positive mm -hmm. um even bad boys let's not even go to 2012 bad boys mm. the only cri one of the only criticisms that they had was that like wake up these are black people mm -hmm. you know in like um, action movie with with guns and stuff, and we have black people having that issue with yeah, them, gun, gun violence. violence in America. So yes. he's absolutely wrong for him to make that statement. And I don't think um, Fashola is, is blaming the entertainment industry. Yeah, true. Um, I just think he's saying that this, that this is also contributing to that. Um, and I think that for Nigerians and our culture, there's a lot that you can pass in terms of messages with our movies because we have a movie culture here. So mm -hmm. I feel, why can't you just do better at, 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 with that responsibility? Why yeah. is it that you must then put that in there? There's other ways to entertain. So I think I don't agree in, on any grounds. Yeah. Totally. I think what I would say is one of the things I've noticed about Nollywood is they really take criticism. Mm. Whenever somebody criticizes them or expects them to do better, you always see somebody that will come out with a rebuttal yeah. or an attack. Like, we are trying our best. Yeah. They always give that excuse. Yeah. I think Yule Doche did not understand where Fashola was coming from. Mm. His point was that money, um, all these money Green rituals, neutrals. kidnapping is a myth. We haven't actually seen any evidence. I'm not saying that Juju does not exist, but all of the things that they highlight in movies that if you do this, if you do that, mm. that is money ritual. We don't have any evidence that yeah. those things actually would give you money. So that was where Fashola was coming from. We want to, um, this America that is even comparing himself to, there are so many movies, yeah. so many American movies that talk about, you know, um, innovation. Things. You know, yeah. they're, they're so, they, they have diverse movies. Mm. But Nigerian movies, if you take like 20 Nigerian movies, like 15 would have money rituals, yeah. kidnapping, yeah. something that has even to do with that. Even down to Sugar Rush, movie. I haven't thought about, like even Sugar Rush that wasn't necessarily a home video thing. Mm -hmm. They still had Juju in there. Yeah, I mean, they still had Bang that. Bang was receiving shots. Receiving that shots. Not, <laughs> not not and, yeah, so. Yeah, so there was, even, even in recent movies, we still see these things yeah. in the movies. So, and, and again, in American movies, yeah. Whenever Tell they portray it. these things, mm. it's obviously a myth. Yeah. They don't portray it as reality. And it's yeah. usually for you to learn from it. And there's something to learn. But the way they portray it in Nigerian movies, it's like it's the norm. Yeah. This is the reality. Yeah. And that is what Fashola is saying, that we want to progress as a nation, we want to move <clears> forward. And the truth is, when you look at the movie industry of a particular nation, if you look at America, they invest a lot into their movie yeah. industry because there's an image 
yeah. that they whether you like it or not you know most of the imagery that mm -hmm. we have about america is mm -hmm. from what we see in their yeah. movies a lot of people have not traveled out of the country but you, but you already have an idea of what america yeah. is mm -hmm. yeah. so if i'm and uh, I'm f if I'm a foreign person and I come across, you know, Nollywood cinema, yeah. of course I'm going to have a m the mindset Again. that this is what yeah. goes on in your yeah. country. I'm not going to think it's a myth. Yeah. I'm not going to think that it doesn't happen. I'm not going to yeah. think it's entertainment. Yeah. I'm going to think this is your reality. Yeah. So you, uh, uh, you the addition needs to be I have to, to agree. I'm yeah, checking into our other story for mm -hmm. the day, I think, in regards to that. But it's absolutely true. If you look at America, um, we even get more patriotic about being mm -hmm. American and knowing about America due to the um, representation of the country in movies. Sure. Um, I think we really lack substance with our with our um, Nigerian in, um, entertainment industry and our movies. And there's a lot more that you can, even when I see movies trying to attempt to talk about intelligence and mm. deep social ills, it's still, it's never still research too, properly. Yeah, they it's, never research properly. Yeah, it's, and it's still surface value. It's not like in depth. I still haven't seen a director that can really bring to life mm -hmm. a proper story that you I don't think, I think, I think it has to do with um, the investors because uh, I watch Bling Bling um, mm -hmm. over the weekend. And um, there was this movie, she was a screenwriter that wanted to write a very amazing script, but the investor, or what's it called now, the CEO of the uh, marketing company yeah, the marketer. now. Yeah, the marketer was like, say, ah, let's put in Aki and Popo, let's put in Mr. Ibu. Yeah, yeah, in, in the, the movie. movie. Right. Let's put in Aki and Popo, let's put in Mr. Ibu because it's what people in Asaba want. Once we mm -hmm. put these people, is a blockbuster mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I think um, the marketers, the investors, they still have this mindset that even when you have a solid story, mm -hmm. you as a cute thing, you just have to put a little bit, they'll be like, okay, mm -hmm. that's what makes us African. That's yeah. what the people want to see. Yeah. But they don't know that there are a lot of people that are intellectual yeah. that really want to it's like back in the days when we didn't really appreciate rap in mm -hmm. nigeria because you'd be like oh nobody wants to listen to yeah. that everybody just wants to dance but in this new era people are beginning to yeah. even ladies yeah. are beginning just, to I, I, understand they and should appreciate embrace change rap yeah. And yeah. Yeah. so yeah. i think um what you let us chase i get it's fear because it's fear now is a lot of people tend to blame or a lot of people in government tend to blame other situations for why they're doing certain things. Now, it's fair that before you start banning Nollywood and render other people mm. jobless. Now, don't be surprised that they start saying that um, the moment you have um, NBC, there will be a new NBC law that the moment you have a um, money ritual or you have anything, you're going to be paying the fine of this, 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 that. And that will render a lot of people jobless, to be honest. But I don't I'm think not it saying... will render them jobless. I think it will make them to, go yeah, back yeah, and yeah. think of new stories. Because that was what fashion was. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. You know that there are people that actually want to watch those stories. And, and that the, they those do not really people, care about people, your See, those people sugar rush are humans and are bound to, to change, adjust to, adjust, to change. adjust and change, mm. to be honest. Yes. All right. Give All right. them something well new. Said, I'm sure they well will said. We need to move on to the next story. So um, I think we're still on um, <laughs> the entertainment yeah. industry in Hollywood. All right. So Sheryl Sani, um, the former lawmaker, comments the federal government over plans to boost the entertainment industry with 7 billion naira. Um, he tweeted that the 7 billion naira federal government support for, create, for creative industry is commendable. It's a strong boost to an industry that has contributed a lot to our economy and culture. The disbursement and utilization of it should be guided by the professionals in the field and not by bureaucrats and politicians. I totally agree with this because um, at the end of the day, that 7 billion will come down and we will not see a dime. We will not see any change in the entertainment <laughs> industry. We will not see any investment. We will not see any change in structure. We will not see anything. And you'll be wondering, but they just gave you guys 7 billion naira. Do you understand? So I think um, this should be properly monitored by professionals and not the people that get the money and then they just enrich their pockets and then mm. they still say, uh, we're doing this, we're doing that. So mm. I think he has said it all. I think Sheo Sani, well said. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Okay, um, yeah, I think it's commendable that the Nigerian government is taking the creative industry seriously and mm. we want to invest. You're seeing how much these musicians and creatives are making. Yeah, yeah, but I just wanted to say that, okay, basically, I'm focusing now on Nollywood. If we are going to look at Nollywood, investing 7 billion mm. naira mm. into the industry is a little bit far fetched because. It's that's chicken seven feed. <laughs> yes, it is. I talk so a chicken feed because when you convert seven billion to dollars, that is the budget of 
one movie. That's like a low budget movie. <laughs> <laughs> Only on yeah. America. Yeah. By American that's, standards. I don't, I don't think that's even as much as they spend on one episode of um, Do you Game understand? Of on one episode of Game of Thrones. And if you look at Avengers Endgame, they spent a total of 360 million dollars. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, La La Land, they spent 36 million. You know, these movies have huge budgets. Mm. So now these movies, their budget alone is what you're allocating to the entire industry, entertainment industry. I don't know how, you know, personally for me, I don't see how that is going to facilitate growth in the industry. Because one of the things that creatives have always clamored for is that they are not getting paid mm. on the same level that other creatives in other countries are getting paid. And that's, no matter how much you look at it, it's going to stifle their creativity. Because one of the things that Chimamanda said during one time like this, that she was giving a talk was that one of the reasons why she was able to come up with her books was because she had plenty time on her hand. Mm. Because one of the things about creativity is you, I don't, I don't, if as a creative, I should not be thinking about, oh, how am I, how am I going to get food to yeah. eat? How am I going to pay my mm. rent? If all these things are settled, it's easy for me to just throw myself into my work, yeah. focus, and if I'm editing a movie, I'm not, okay, I'm editing this movie, I'm going to do everything. Now, with this kind of budget, what you're doing is somebody will be the director, the person will also be the film editor, the person will also double as the light well, I'm, person. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, it's not even about just that maybe there will be new offices for things you know for to buy equipment mm. and stuff like and that I was, uh, I was, um, I was also going i'm to hoping say, it won't like be for certain movies i don't think they're just going to say okay this seven billion is in case this person wants to shoot this movie mm -hmm. give this person five million give this i don't mm. think that's how they're going to disburse my, my, it my that's why we need the professionals to actually disburse this money what will it be used for and they need to be as transparent as possible lay out your plan let us know that okay this is what the seven billion will be used for mm -hmm. in the space of so so to so so years do you understand like don't just tell me oh we used it for this we used it for this without no transparency i think that's where my issue goes into more as well is how first of all if that seven million even exists and it's actually <laughs> gonna happen it, i'm even sure if, it even does if but even it will if, declare even if it does come how it's going to be then trickled down especially mm. to the grassroots um, exactly is this a budget that's going to actually touch us sitting here or is it going to be for people who own production um you know production companies Houses. or like the you know the mm -hmm. top the hierarchies because there's hierarchies into that so i feel like if it's not affecting the people who are actually on ground i mean mm -hmm. the actors the actresses the, the people actually doing, doing the um, doubt if productive it, this work then them. this conversation doesn't even really i think this would be maybe this would be good to, um to the people who are doing the marketing to clap oh. um, clamp down on piracy you know for stuff like that i just yeah. want to believe it's going to be for structural use yeah. and not and then just also for to compare it to america is a bit it's a bit far-fetched like even look, look at bollywood who's also really big uh, big um industry there um, right next to hollywood they don't mm -hmm. actually spend that much money on their movies either mm. so i don't think it's a good way to just directly compare seven billion and like you know yeah um, but but um, you know me, what guess in. what the mm -hmm. seven billion if they just use it to put a proper structure in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. employ the right people who will mm. be against certain things and make sure that okay their salaries for like four years are settled do you understand and then they can pick it up from there yeah. i believe this money will be very <laughs> Okay. I, I and these people I, will be happy to do their job. You know, I feel like all this is still hypothetical. Because yeah. you said something about um, in Bollywood that they don't spend as much on their movies. And I wanted to say that. Take out the movies, because this money is not for anybody shooting any movie. No, no, no. <laughs> or making I any, or shooting any music in, video. They are putting it into the entertainment yeah. industry. And now, personally, for me, I'm talking about Nollywood. Mm. And I'm saying that this particular money. Because you, you said that there are some people, there are some mm. movies that have a low budget, and I know that people have been clamoring and people have been talking about, you know, the Parasite movie that yeah. won the Oscars, yeah. and people are like that. We need Nigerians because it's, it was a movie about poor people. Yeah. There are a lot of poor people in Nigeria, yeah. mm -hmm. so people were like clamoring that we need a movie like that. Mm. And then somebody raised it that the budget for that movie alone was approximately like seven billion dollars. Yeah. That I'm um, seven naira. billion naira that they want to invest, you know, into the Nigerian. Um, creative industry, mm. entertainment industry. Basic, my point is the seven billion naira. Truly, we don't know where it is going to because they've mm. not really highlighted how mm. or their plans for the money. Mm. I hope it is not audio. Mm. I hope that no they audio. Are, <laughs> I hope they are really serious about investing right. the money. So, speaking of audio, this is no audio break, but we gotta go. We will be right back after the short break. <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still...
end up as a useless child. I decide them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Baba? Across TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. I still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early, sleeping early. <laughs>Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And um, rapper Vector has tweeted something very controversial, or maybe I'm the one saying it as controversial. He wrote, why do people shout in church, believing God would hear them more? If anything, it shows how selfish, because the volume increases because the individual, Vuvuzela, wants God to answer him or her first. He further said, this attitude isn't Christian, but rather a competition. <laughs> I, I think for me, I, I would say that I can really relate to what he said. And take because, that. Take that. Because I just graduated from university mm. not too long, and I was in a fellowship. So one of the things that always amazed me was how we would be praying, and some people would just take it upon themselves. Yep. Like as soon as they have a megaphone in their mm. throat, and they would keep shouting, even after the prayer is done, they would keep on shouting. Yeah. And then they'll say they're under the influence of the spirits. Like people would have to like cut them outside because right. they are making noise and they're disturbing the service. Personally, for me, I just felt like it did not make any sense because Absolutely I feel like not. it's something you can control. You can control being a nuisance <laughs> to other people, whether it is under the guise of spirituality or you are connected to the heavens. I don't really care because one of the things I've noticed about Nigerians is they like to inconvenience people under the guise of spirituality mm. and re being religious. For instance, you go on a bus. Now I'm on a bus, right? I'm stressed. Oh, from <laughs> I'm stressed from I whatever hate it is that, <laughs> that so burnt much. you. And then I enter a bus and then somebody starts a sermon. Decides. And the unfortunate part is that the sermon is not even a sermon that is preaching love or a sermon that would even like maybe calm you, you down, so, make you so feel in better. Love. Like why do you need them to preach love? I'm just saying I like, don't even like, need it, you to it, preach anything. anything. Don't you like, get it? Like why preach it? love? Who cares? First of all, we like we like this thing. It's yeah, a Nigerian it's thing. A Nigerian if I thing. feel like I have a ground on something, I want to enforce it. Mm -hmm. It works in some places. That's why when we go abroad, we do really well because we can do that with the workforce and all that stuff. But if you look at us as a people, we do that with mm -hmm. our personal lives, and I, I think it's too much. Now, religion is something that I know I always get into like this controversial argument with mm -hmm. people here. I really don't like religion in Nigeria, full stop. I don't like Christianity True. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I wonder, is this the same Holy Spirit? Because um, I've lived outside and it's not this crazy. Like, yeah. what is happening? I have a neighbor. Oh, God, I hope he doesn't watch the show. <laughs> you know, this man wakes, wakes up at like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and has a devotion with his family and I can hear it in my house. I really think that that's super inappropriate and mm -hmm. I feel like I should be able to call someone to come and say, um, yeah. um, noise pollution happening, yeah, can you true. please come and find this person? There's no business you have, there's nothing you're, you're doing that must cross over to somebody else's life. If you cannot contain your beliefs in your own space and you're using it to choke somebody else, I think that you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, um, we are the ones who have all these traditional views about homosexuals or um, feminists or all those other, you know, like um, progressive alternative things. Mm -hmm. And we're so loud about that because we don't want them in our, in our faces. But in yeah. the same breath, we're doing the same thing. We're doing thing. the same thing. Mm. I think um, I relate to a vector on this one. I'm not even talking about whether it's selfish because you expect God to hear you first. I don't mm. think that's it. I just don't like the noise pollution beats. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? Do not disturb me with your prayers. Sometimes I feel like I'm a demon because I'm the type of person that you walk into a room I mean, and then you start, whatever spirits came upon you mm -hmm. and you feel the need to shout, I'll tell you, I'll tap you doing that spirit falling on you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, can you, take, my shoes. Yeah. Can, can you take that outside? Mm. Like, I really do not care because um, I don't see it as you're selfish because you want God's hand because that's not how God works. God knows the heart and I think he sees the heart before he answers prayers. Mm -hmm. And so it's just about the noise beat of it. And then I don't see the need for churches to use big microphones and speakers. 
<laughs> and then on Sunday, you now see them on a lot of streets. And then there's a church here, there's a church there, there's a church there. And then on Sunday that you decide that, oh, I want to have my peace and quiet mm. in my house. Churches everywhere <laughs> making noise. Kilo day. Like, let's be realistic. And it, yeah. I don't understand and, why the why the, um, the standard is different for different people. Like, if yeah. you are not, if three of us here throw a party, at Phase one, for example, they won't let that fly. They will not let you, you know, as yeah, I'm talking like a disco party. I think, I think they, they make it look fly. like Christianity is for poor people. <laughs> no. And it's sad. Mm. No, I really. think it's not that. I think um, Nigeria is a country that is very, very religious. So when it comes to religious and it hasn't really things, gotten we, as excuse, much. No we excuse so many things. Well, religious, that guys but not religion. spiritual. Exactly. Because the truth is, if you go to developed countries, some of the things that happen... They would have rescued the pastor. Why happen. there and all then? All of this yeah. noise, pollution, going to a public place, preaching, anyways, doing all of anyways, that. Anyways, we're having allowed. an amazing time, but definitely we've got to go. But not to worry. We'll be here at the same time tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. And you can also watch Tea Time in London and on Auto TV. My thank you as always goes to my anchors, Ife Omai and Nimi Dekombi. My name is Ife Olu Do join us again. Peace and love.